Welcome back to the Payless of Tech Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, I am happy to be back with Mike and Red. Oh no. He's broken again. We t- Is this on I like boys but <laughs> I know it's a great TV show on Prime Video, isn't it? The voice is great, right? Love Thank it. you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have to apologize so hard in advance about the audio last week. I'm so sorry, everybody. When I say <laughs> that... Sorry to keep you waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Quite frankly, folks, okay, look, nobody has better audio issues than I do. Okay, folks, believe me, <laughs> I have the best audio issues. And uh, there was just there was literally no time to go in and fix it. Uh, we, that was... Uh, it, it was one of those things where... Uh, we're doing it live. It might as well have been done. Like, <laughs> you write the thing Basically, and I'll read it. We're doing it live. So, yeah. <laughs> the show almost didn't happen at all last week. So, the fact we got anything was a gift. Yeah. So, you're welcome. And you're welcome. welcome to the present. <laughs> so, apologies in advance. Call it the present. Mm-hmm. But we, fi- we found the issue. We fixed it. And, uh, <laughs> you know, what is this? Amateur hour? Oh, I tell you, no respect. <laughs> Yeah, thankfully we didn't have to put and Randy out behind the barn and, uh, you know, <laughs> the whole, uh, just look at the flowers, watch the yeah. sunset, look like we the... did with Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Drew, he has but died once you're not before. Supposed to talk about that. <laughs> oh, we right. promised. That's we made NBA a pact. Thing. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Nick went to go Good work point. at Spar Spar Base, Spark X, <laughs> Sparks Nevada. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He's, or something. Nick is. Chasing his dreams. <laughs> Why do you have two bunnies right next to your face, Randy? His bunnies? Follow the, yellow, oh, follow the oh. white rabbit. Wow. That flew right <laughs> over. Bunnies don't fly. But <laughs> Maybe not where you live. But we have got more uh, rumors basically sur- I'm, I'm sorry I gotta keep us on some kind of track here <laughs> but the the 15 inch air seems a lot closer than I expected and I'm curious if there's people in your guys's personal life because me and Randy were discussing how we've we've run into people that like the m2 air even though we didn't really like it all that much and I'm wondering if there's similar people that you could envision buying a cheaper larger MacBook is that common in your circles too um no if anything i you guys would know this uh you got you you guys would yeah you guys would know this better than i would and by you guys i mean drew but uh, also the audience <laughs> i don't expect my, my, if i don't know this i don't expect mike to be in the uh, no but this is the okay. hot take uh in my circle uh we'll recognize one of the names somebody we killed you know following dreams and all that stuff but uh and one, one of the groups <laughs> we said, killed scott scott this is the hot take oh. this week that everyone's freaking out about in my circles mm. and this, i see this isn't this is not but just can i show this sure yeah yeah yeah. it yeah. literally is a circle okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you got you guys have this like private group chat with not me in it no it well it's just it's that's the uh i I almost feel like i'm kicked out of that group (laughs) yeah Uh, okay good yeah makes me feel better (laughs) cover protected almost blew the cover boys almost blew the cover (laughs) um so yeah the 12 inch for so audio listeners uh there was a a light rumor about uh apple considering the 12 inch macbook design making a comeback which has been gone for four or five years now. It's been a while. And it is still to this day the lightest laptop and technically the thinnest laptop Apple has ever made. And it was limited by the technology of its time. So it had terrible performance, terrible thermals, because it had crappy Intel chips and it was fanless, while still being x86, and um, I guess uh, Randy's inner circle of best friends are fascinated by <laughs> the potential of this coming back. <laughs> why, why are you throwing shade? <laughs> I don't see me in there. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't get an invite to 
interview something. <laughs> interview. You don't pigeon. see me freaking out. I, is that going to be public? No- <laughs> is that knowledge? Like, will that be known by this coming out? No, maybe. I okay. probably not. Uh, it'll depend, I guess. But it depends how on how well the interview goes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's fine. We get to interview Steve Jobs. <laughs> what? <laughs> Somehow. Yeah, we turned Steve Jobs into a chat GBT. Someone there probably go. got that. I, I think someone did has you guys a see the of dude you? in my Discord? You? Yeah. There's yeah. a virtual you out there who loves the iPad, by the way. <laughs> I think I have a picture. Someone, someone was so mad that Drew was becoming more critical towards Apple that they made an AI version that is more of my 2017 self. So it's like Apple Sheep Drew versus 2023 Drew. But yeah, they, they someone made a bot. I forget their name, but that was interesting. Would you... It was pretty fun to interact with. I had a great time just asking it questions and all that. I'm trying to find all the different things I asked it. <laughs> they were like, fake Drew responds better than real Drew. Yeah, right. Now that's an apple sheep I can red. get behind. <laughs> this Drew actually responds. We did... <laughs> we did a video a long time ago about uh, how AI could replace me eventually. So I just didn't expect it to be this soon. I mean, there's enough audio of you talking out there that um, if anybody's going to be, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, not catfish. Um, <laughs> Swindling? Catfish. No, like when somebody. Uh, what What's that thing called? When you when you gaslighting. No, when somebody <laughs> uses they, they make. <laughs> There's AI that makes you look like you're saying things deep that fake? you're not. Deep fake. Thank you. Deep fake. Mm. fake deep fake. Deep. If anybody's going to have a deep fake on this panel, it's Drew first. It was a deep fish. Deep fish. Big fish. <laughs> you and McGregor. That's a great movie. Fake That cat. is an amazing movie. Yeah. Um, Which yeah, one? No, uh, Big, Big fish? fish. You uh, and McGregor? Oh. I that came out that. right before episode three. I thought you were talking about Blackfish, which Randy played a part in because he worked at SeaWorld. <laughs> I don't want to talk about that. I actually can't talk about that. I actually can't <laughs> talk about that. <laughs> so, 12-inch MacBook. 12-inch MacBook. So, <laughs> so, a 15-inch. So, here's what's interesting about uh, bigger and smaller MacBook Airs or Mac, whatever you want to call these, you know, the, these schematics of the chassis ultimately there is hype about doing this is apple's best dream people want to do more with thinner remember when apple was on that weird kick like the thinnest ever the thinnest iphone the thinnest ipad ipad air 2 you here's the, the pencil Steve jobs era shaved no yeah. that and thing rolled over way past the steam iMac. <laughs> N- iMac. no i'm just saying like ever since steve uh departed you know, he. Where did he go? The, the, the thickness of the device. Behind the barn, Randy. What? Behind the barn. <laughs> Why did the chicken kill itself? <laughs> yeah, we're past 15 To get seconds. to the other side. <laughs> this is a That's very dark, dark episode of Tales That's of dark, Drew. We apologize. Oh, I just love that joke because it starts dark, but it has the same punchline as the original. So. Point if you, being, if you have to explain when it, it's Steve not was funny gone, anymore. <laughs> when Steve was gone, they slowly started making everything thicker. I mean, they kept the thin thing going for a couple of years, but then as time went on, everything just got bigger and Remember bigger and when bigger. they took the pencil and then they lifted up the iPad? <laughs> and then they took the pencil and they shaved about a, a, a fourth of it <laughs> off? And then they lift up. That was like unnecessary flexing. I was so agitated because I'm like, oh, I get it. We get it. Take <laughs> take three pieces of paper, put it on the table. The thinnest iPad. I get it. Okay. But <laughs> that was around the same time you have iPhone 6. And and dare I say, what's that thing called? Um, uh, ben Gate. So, Watergate. Yeah. Watergate. I am not a deep fake, deep deep fake fish. Gate. <laughs> You're holding it wrong. <laughs> You're bending it wrong. <laughs> We're so spicy today. 
What's it? Ten minutes? Okay, good warm up, guys. Let's start the real show now. <laughs> okay, three, two, one. I got right. you to do it, Go uh, Nick. Uh, not Nick. Uh, Mike. Uh, I call I'm Mike. Nick. Nick. Now. Nick. Mike. You're Nick. I'm now. also behind the barn. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, let's try to grab some normality out of this. A 12-inch MacBook, I think, would. S- I'm biased. I thought the iPhone Mini was gonna keep selling. I think the 12-inch MacBook is gonna sell, but. If I'm trying to be objective here, I think the 15-inch MacBook would do way better if it's lighter and mm. smaller and let you know no fans and all that. MacBook Air Wombo Jumbo, he she Wombos. <laughs> pronounced Wombo. Wombo. I love yeah. Mike's face of concern when you start going off the rails like that. He's just like, yeah. What's yeah. happening? No, but you bring Mike's, up a good Mike's, point. Mike's been around iPhones, long enough though. to know what this I, this this podcast is about. He can't act shocked. Mike, <laughs> clutch your pearls. You can't know. He's been around long by enough. The, he knows by him. the end of this podcast, you're going to wish Randy had audio problems. <laughs> <laughs> but I like the comment saying that I thought uh, Randy was cursing and that we were bleeping it out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want to... <laughs> I want to just say to that commenter in particular, you're right. That's what it was. He was actually just cursing profusely the entire time. Randy wasn't we actually get... uh, in the Marines. He was in the Navy. Because <laughs> oh, he swore like a cursing. sailor. That guy sailor. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Drew. But your point about bigger MacBook Air selling better, the iPhone lineup is not good indication of that. Because while Apple wasn't super happy about the 12 mini and 13 mini all the rumors are pointing to the 14 plus is selling even worse than the minis did. So maybe if anything, that's an argument as to why they should do. Uh, I don't, I know we all refer to it as the 12 inch MacBook because I think that was pretty much the only 12 inch MacBook. But if they were redesigning it, they would probably give it thinner bezels. So I don't even know if we could still call it a 12. It would just be uh the form factor of the 12 inch macbook but with a notch and slim bezels and hopefully an m2 or m3 chip that um i would think would sell better because the people buying the m2 air are buying it for the the form factor it's light you know it's supposed to be portable and the 12 inch was way thinner way lighter so Mm -hmm. doesn't that kind of lean into the the purpose of the air market i I want to say yes instinctually, which is why mm-hmm. the people who who fell in love and were like diehards about the 12 inch MacBook back then, like there is an audience for that. I I believe, and I and it might not be in the in the in the norm of like student or grandma or what. There might be people who are all about the aesthetics. I. I know somebody in my circle who does choose form over function first because his thought process is there's very little that in that an iPhone can't do today that that you would need a Mac for unless you were doing a very like almost like trait specific tasking like coding or streaming and we, we know the examples, yeah, yeah, yeah. but when it comes to just right. fun, uh, uh, do, going through your day to day, he's like, I, you know, most times you have the phone. So be, be, with that same logic, he was like, I would want the best form factor, the most comfortable, the lightest, easiest traveling laptop that I can get and, and have that redundancy just for the sake of, it's still a bigger battery than the iPhone. And he, he made it, he made a case to me. This is a guy who, I don't know if you guys do this. I, I, I would be interested to hear what you, what you guys think about this, but he loves taking his calls on the Mac. Like he loves all the, and it all just like echoes on the iPad, the Mac, the watch, the phone. Yeah. And, but he, his preferred method of, of any communication is on the Mac. He only uses his phone just to do the handoff. He doesn't like mm. using his phone like that. He uses the phone when he has to leave the house. He uses the phone when he wants to take a photo. That's about it. He And when he's in the, his house, which most of the time he is, he's taking all communication, all media consumption, 
and all productivity emails and stuff, web browsing on the Mac. And he wants the most comfortable, lightest, easy to move around with a relatively decent, understandably, uh, you're at home sized uh, battery. So it's like, if I have to plug it in in a couple hours, that's fine. I just want to be able to just grab and go. And he doesn't touch his phone. His phone has like 100% battery. I think he has like a, uh, 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 like a 13 Pro Max or something, and it's probably like at 99% battery health. What's that like? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about that, but I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious to hear what you guys, you know. So for him, uh, for him, he he would, this is a guy that a, a small 12-inch MacBook would, that's exactly for him. But if the 15 inch is just a little bit bigger, but not that much heavier, I don't know if we would see the same issues as like the the 14 plus because that's that doesn't need to exist. Um, but yeah. So my, my question for you guys is, are do you guys turn off your notifications to come onto the Mac? Because I do. I don't have any of that on. And he, mm. and he he's he's the yin, he's the yin to my yang. He's nothing but all come through the Mac. Hmm. That is interesting. A lot of my notifications no, are guess... broken and disjointed. So usually when I get a notification, it's either <laughs> echoed on iMessage on both or it's only on one. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's never consistent just because my iCloud has been full for over 400 days, which I think is affecting a lot of things. <laughs> but I really need <laughs> to do some spring cleaning. <laughs> That'll but do it. Yeah, I, do, I have tried the calling on the Mac before, and it has been nice, but it was only nice when I had my wife in the room and in the chair behind me on my left shoulder, right shoulder, whichever one it is. Uh, yeah. And it was nice having someone on right. the computer talking instead of just having on the phone. I guess the phone would do the same, <laughs> but the computer had speakers and all that. So we utilize that. Otherwise, uh, I don't know. I, I do like the form factor idea of a 12-inch MacBook. Uh, it'd be even crazier if you could do a 12 inch MacBook Pro. That'd be insane. But Ooh. It, it would uh, be lighter than the the basically 12 inch MacBook. I mean, I, iPad Pro. Um, mm -hmm. This thing is. It's heavy. two pounds exactly. I think. This. The the 12 inch MacBook when it was around. Yeah. Was oh two pounds goodness. flat. Whereas the M2 Air, if you've ever used one of those, is like 2.7. Man. So, it's crazy light. Yeah. I, I remember using it back in the day, and it was so small that I could, even though it was a physical keyboard, I would type with my thumbs. <laughs> it was so tiny <laughs> for a laptop. Um, yeah. But probably the biggest, so to answer your question, Randy, like, other than, like, right now, like, me and Mike were testing things, like, I, I like answering calls on big screens be usually because there's big speakers attached so it sounds like the person's <laughs> in the room practically yeah. but uh for the most part i don't do very many video or voice calls and if i do i'm more likely to do them on the phone i guess so i'm i'm not like all in or all out i still have notifications on on the mac and i'll occasionally take them if i'm by the mac but um, like when we were on our trip and we were calling family back home, that was all on the phone or on the, uh, no, not the iPad. We don't use that. But <laughs> the biggest issue aside from performance and battery life that I think could be a deal breaker for this 15 inch air was something that's very easy to forget now because all these years have gone by and we're just like, Oh wow, that was so light. That was so thin. That was so capable. I just looked it up. The, the base model. 12 inch MacBook with 256 gigs of storage, 8 gigs of RAM, 1.1 gigahertz <laughs> of Intel M. Mm. Intel had an M series, which is kind of funny. Mm. It was M2, but not the kind you're thinking. Um, <laughs> There's actually work. It, yeah. <laughs> $1,300 for the base model. So. Small, slow, weak battery, and it was light, sure, and we like them now because you could probably. So was my eBay. bank account afterwards. <laughs> yeah, it's like three hundred, four hundred bucks now on eBay, but that was that was steep for what you were getting. Like even the M2 Air is is cheaper than that now, and that's with inflation and everything. Um, 
So if if they were to revive the 12 inch MacBook, do you think it would still work at that twelve hundred or thirteen hundred dollar price, or would they need it to be at the one thousand or less in order for it to actually sell? Seeing how they handle their iPads, I would not be surprised if they were like, "Yep, twelve hundred dollars." Like that's <laughs> that's that's a fair price. We that need a reason reasonable. to. Yeah, that's how they handled the iPads, man. Like they asked silly, they asked for silly, you know. This is this needs to be five six hundred dollars. No, it doesn't. That does not need to be. <laughs> they they want a reason to increase the pricing and four hundred and thirty seven dollars and eighteen cents. That is the MSRP. <laughs> I think uh, back. they get really specific. <laughs> I knowing knowing how. Okay, I, I'm, I, I will tell you what I would expect that lineup to be, and then we'll just tell the truth here, and we'll stop lying. Something has to take <laughs> its place. Something has to, the the 12-inch or the 15-inch has to take its place over something. And uh, the M2 MacBook Air would have the redesign to not – it would be something – something else now comes in replacing that, and uh, there is no M2 MacBook Air anymore, and that could be the 12-inch one. So same starting price, I see. and then I like that idea. The 15 inch will be uh, the the new you know uh, sibling to that MacBook Plus. Uh, <laughs> MacBook Plus, baby. But really, okay. Now now let's let's stop lying. Stop. It, it's just gonna complicate the lineup again. They're just gonna throw it in there. Yeah, get get the get the, <laughs> the old decoy. chassis. Yeah, get the old chassis of the uh, of the M1. Get the new chassis of the M2, but bad specs. And get this one too. <laughs> like everything, it's they all list that on the compare page. <laughs> Bad specs. Bad specs. Everything's just a roundup. Hey, for two hundred dollars more, for one fifty more, for ooh, for a hundred dollars more. Like that's they'll complicate the lineup because it's in Apple's best interest to have that that decoy. They're confuse you out of your money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like crypto. <laughs> but yeah. I kind of like that idea, at least what you put down, Randy, of reintroducing the baseline MacBook or MacBook Air or whatever as yeah. mm-hmm. that 12-inch and then just upping the 13-inch to plus uh, or anything else. <laughs> but it's not bad. I, I like that. Um, it would be neat to see it come back, but I'm definitely not one for like the smallest laptop out there, I think. The iPad mini does already everything that I need a small computer to do in basics. If I really want to get down nitty gritty. Yeah. For like That's actual, even lighter. <laughs> yeah. But for like editing and all that, I'll probably default yeah. to the studio in which, yeah, it's not mobile. But uh, if I were to get a laptop, it it would be nice to have like a, I guess there is a 13 inch MacBook Pro, but it. Doesn't really have the design that I like. So. Let's talk about that. Let's not talk with about the introduction. That. <laughs> with the introduction potentially in the next couple months of a 15 inch Air, that's bringing up some points that I've seen that I disagreed with uh, there. But now I feel like after sleeping on it or not sleeping on it, I'm like they may have a point. People are saying the M1 Air needs to go away. And I was like, no, it's fine. Like, leave my poor boy alone. It's the first MacBook Air I ever liked. Come on. This is a good machine. It's cheap. Like, and it's fast. And it and it's walks good, but... so we could run. <laughs> Did the... I know I had legs. <laughs> it's the M1 MacBook Air is, is the the hobbits. And I'm, uh, <laughs> oh, what's his name? Aragorn. And I'm like, you bow to no one. And I <laughs> kneel down. <laughs> you drop this king. You know, the, one, <laughs> the MacBook that started it all. But like, it did come out in end of 2020. And now we're in ah. 2023. Like, do you guys think it's its time has come or no. or or same with the the 13 inch pro like the the touch bar it lived another year we didn't think that would happen but now that there's talk of a 15 inch air dropping and all that do you think one of these older macbook designs 
or both are on the chopping block? Like, do you think any of them will be killed by the end of the year? Hmm. I do think it's probably time for chopping of the air. Just because, like you Ooh. said, it's, it's been since 2020, unfortunately. Um, would be nice for a nice little refresh. Maybe get either the notch design to be standard across the whole lineup, <laughs> even though... It, it already got it, though. That's the problem. That's the, that's the M2 air. <laughs> that's... <laughs> they're like so it's like ipad 9 and ipad 10 you know like I see no they difference. released the follow-up <laughs> slide one slide two slide one slide Corporate two needs you to find the difference between these two pictures yeah i guess maybe it is time to retire it but it could open up the doors for a new design whether they want to improve on the notch or get rid of the notch and add dynamic island for some reason to no. <laughs> <laughs> or something else uh i'm they just could. picturing that menu bar <laughs> changing on a mac that's it that has software <laughs> issues it just <laughs> extends <laughs> <it>. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's called the uh a dynamic that's... archipelago that's called the uh, the dock, and it's already dynamic. It moves based off of what you minimize or open. So, a sound. little bit, but <laughs> just little. just switch between Discord and OBS right now, and notice how much the menu bar changes, and imagine how much animation that would require mm. for an island. It would be like it would be all over the place. You'd make me nauseous. <laughs> You'd get yeah. island fever. <laughs> island fever? Is that a thing? Yeah. It is. Apparently I haven't been on an island Sorry. long enough then. That's just what our that's just what us natives say. <laughs> Aren't you <laughs> back? <laughs> <laughs> that's what they want you to think. What what do you that's think, Randy? Thirteen inch pro or thirteen inch air? Is it on the chopping block? It's interesting because this is a this we're playing a game of kitchen and he who blinks first about the next move uh, sets a precedent of what the routine might become. Because right now we have M1 and M2, and mm -hmm. the 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 biting of the fingernails question is like, oh, when is the N1 considered dated and obsolete and gone, discontinued? Because you could, if you keep the M1 around, you're showing how competent these in-house you know ap apple silicon chips are mm -hmm. if you remove it you show the advancements of you know year after year or cycle after cycle what next iteration chip offers the m3 and the, with the m3 and the m2 chips now in the lineup these are by far the fastest and most efficient they'll do that whole spiel right and look at this graph yeah <laughs> That's me holding up the graph. <laughs> Just silence. Up... <laughs> That's not a graph. Yeah, yeah. Look at this. He's chip. holding up the MagSafe case. Can oh, we yeah. acknowledge how like everyone thought the MagSafe cases, the clear cases, were ugly when they came out, and now like they're literally everywhere. Like I see them all over the place. I do everyone this so I can show. There, because they're right. Look at my color, guys. It's green. Like I want you to. I want you to see. <laughs> Look it. at my color. It's green. <laughs> so, uh, okay. So it, it it really. If I was head of of this decision and it was my call, I would. Oh, I'm running off of uh, of not all the information because I need to know what the M3 what's. What what's the design and the uh, where are these M3s going into? So if the fifteen if it is a fifteen or twelve inch MacBook Air, then yes, I would say get rid of the M1. Not because it's a bad ship, I would still recommend it today, but because I would want continuity across the lineup with uh, design mm. language and uh, even I/O. I, I would want continuity with 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 what the software 
is going to be enabled to do kind of like going forward because the M1 mm-hmm. would be probably be the first. That, that's something I think about. It's like, when does the M1 no longer support the latest Mac OS? Uh, what, wh- why would that not question. work? I don't know when the M1 is literally obsolete, not, not just marketing wise obsolete. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I would, I would remove, I would remove M1 from the lineup as a whole. That means the iMac as well. I know. I'm sorry, Drew. But I would get rid of all M1. <laughs> He'd love to, to so make much. way to make yeah. way of M2, M3, and beyond. But, <laughs> but like, here's that it's you. an Apple's best interest. That actually could bite them in the butt. They would have to remove it. It's an Apple's best interest to have that <laughs> that that you know the decoy of oh no, just price up, price up. But when people are shopping around, people will be like, oh, it's only a couple hundred dollars cheaper because each year, right now it's nine ninety nine, and you can have it. St- you, you need a starting entry point of nine ninety nine, and the M one would make a great nine ninety nine. Okay, but if they keep it around. Assuming the battery efficiency is still good, it supports macOS for a long time of the latest version of macOS. It, the longer it stays around, the more compelling it is to say this laptop is is good enough. If I wasn't doing, you know, we, I, I, now I'm just repeating myself, but if I wasn't doing the, the OBS or the logic and all that stuff, I would stick with the MacBook Air that I had. And I was working off of that for a year, just about a year. Mm-hmm. And everything was running fine. So... I have never been more impressed of a product than I was with the M1 MacBook Air. And I don't know how to put my bias to the side of that because I would keep saying buy that one first. If if these these aren't cheap products, you know, like $1,000 is still $1,000. But if that's the entry point for a, a, a laptop, the M1, the, the M1 MacBook Air is the way to go unless they did some 12-inch macbook equivalent mm-hmm. that's be cheaper but i don't believe they would start it at a thousand dollars they would be like oh this new form factor and it has some more io thus there's more stuff more parts underneath so we have to charge twelve hundred dollars mm-hmm. it's, it's tough man it's it's tough i don't know i i i i can see it going either way it's not clear cut with, with the m1 because the real question is what we're really asking is when is the m1 no longer good enough and I don't know that answer because mm. I th- I still think it's good enough now. Yeah, that's a good point. This is a pretty hey. solid chip. I think uh, the you're right that they probably want a three figure starting price, even if it's barely three figure. <laughs> the, yeah. the lineup starts at nine ninety nine. Wow, that's under a thousand. Woo! Nice, yeah. so affordable. And then you spec it up to eight grand, but. You know, I guess my my it's viewpoint so of M1 Airs is like, I do still think they're a great buy, but I guess I don't tell people to buy them new anyway. Like, I already am pushing for get a refurbished model or get it off eBay. You can find them for 800 or less, you know, and that's still going to be a great buy for what it is. And I guess that kind of eliminates the need, similar to how I'd recommend the 13 Pro over a, 14 or a 14 plus it's like it's a good buy but that doesn't mean apple needs to sell it new anymore because i wouldn't encourage you to get it new in the first place so it's weird it's it's probably some tim cook uh what what's it called foolery where he's like we have a bunch of these in stock and we just need to sell out of them (laughs) so that we don't have a bunch sitting around you bring up a good point um Actually, you just changed my mind. Not change it. You've 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 helped me pick my answer. They're gonna keep the M1 okay. around and for nine ninety nine because that mm. nine ninety nine is cheaper. Given inflation, that that yeah. <laughs> st- that starting point for them, the M1 MacBook Air is the MacBook SE. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, they will keep they'll keep it around and keep selling it f- for just for the price tag alone because you're not really paying. Three figure. Well, maybe I get no, not even with the student or military discount. 
I think after taxes, you're, you're going to hit like a thousand dollars and some change. Um, either way, pretty close. Yeah. That thousand dollars price tag. Fully looks, subsidized. <laughs> fully subsidized is cheaper. That nine ninety nine is cheaper the longer you keep it around. It, it it's with inflation, everything else. The nine ninety nine justifies the price increases for everything else that follows it afterwards, which will have price increases. Also to include mm. a 15 inch or a 12 inch MacBook that will be from somewhere between 12 and $1,500 starting. Uh, they can do that by justifying and you can get a new MacBook just starting at 999 and, and it's the M1. It's the worst of the worst, so to say, but it's the <laughs> cheapest to make. It gets cheaper every year, but they don't change their mm-hmm. pricing to reflect that nine ninety nine becomes yeah. more expensive over time. So mm-hmm. that is how inflation works. They will they will keep it just just for profit margins. Yeah, they'll keep it. Mm. Yeah, hmm. I guess it makes sense financially if you've got a whole bunch of chassis that say MacBook Air on them. Uh, <laughs> or actually, maybe that's something that they print on later. But even still, the design is nothing like anything else. But sure. if they have a whole factory, it's the wedge. Of, yeah, it's the, wedge. the final whole, wedge. They have a whole storage <laughs> facility of wedges. It makes sense to keep it around. Until and they, they stack perfectly because they put them upside down <laughs> to know. make to make yeah. one MacBook uh, M3 MacBook Air equivalent. Well, Drew convinced me though. It's because he said some type of Tim Cook foolery going on that that's <laughs> that was what that is convinced. saving money yeah because <laughs> it immediately services. clicks that's what they it's do it's a supply chain thing yeah well one day maybe maybe it'll be this year maybe it'll be next year but it'll say M1 MacBook Air while supplies last that seems to be the Tim Cook innovation of the last five years is <laughs> instead of just discontinuing something we just say you can buy it now, but at any time it might suddenly say out of stock and then it'll be gone for good. The music lives on. Is but the MacBook Air the that's... next iPod? Oh, it's the next <laughs> it'll, it'll HomePod. It'll go the way of water. No! Yeah. But ever since uh, the HomePod got unnecessarily refreshed for no reason, I now am no longer going to dismiss rumors like the 12-inch MacBook coming back. Because I'm like, hey... I mean, no one asked for that to come back, but it did. So there's actually people asking for this to come back. Um, the, the one caveat of that that I think might be problematic, though, of a 12-inch MacBook that we could be forgetting is also it only had one USB-C port and one headphone jack, and that was it. Do you think Apple would Why? change that up if it was brought back? I don't even know if you can physically fit a second port on a wedge that thin. Yes. They would. They would add a second port. No, no. They uh, they would. They would have but the one port still. It it would have the same language. Oh my god! Now you're making me think. So no MagSafe. Oh man, it's messing with me because now it's like Mm, the the MacBook Air (laughs) has two ports, two USB Cs, two USB Cs, and a headphone jack and a MagSafe. Yeah. No, I'm talking about the M1 MacBook Air. Oh, M1 Air has two, correct. You need to give a reason why you need to upgrade from the M1 MacBook Air to this new 12-inch MacBook. Okay. Um, um, Unless it takes its place or it's just as cheap. I don't see that happening, though. Newer is never cheaper. The only time that was the case is when Apple (laughs) said, look at my M1. Look at the M series chip that we're we're launching here. It's going to be cheaper. Uh-huh. But now that we're now that we're in their full, you know, ecosystem with that now too with the hardware, it's not going to be cheaper. So, how do you justify getting a smaller screen, a smaller form, a smaller footprint and pay more when MacBook Air M1 has two USB-C ports? How do you justify that? Slower speeds? Slower SSD? Mm. something has to give i figured it out and you're not gonna like it but just like the beautiful 24 inch imac they'll they'll just do magsafe on the 12 inch macbook and nothing else but then on the charge brick for your macbook they put all the other ports the charge brick has the Mm. 
extra USB-C, the charge brick has the SD card slot, the Ethernet, and then all that data goes through MagSafe 3. I would actually appreciate MagSafe more if it could do everything, but I don't know if it can do that. I know the 24-inch iMac power cord can do data and power, so why can't the MacBook? That would sell very well, I believe. Mm. <laughs> I... Because people, like, cable management, right? Like you, you, it's I was pe- kidding, but... I, yeah. I think people would want their their brick to do... I mean, you see Anchor kind of doing it. Like, you plug in the wall, and Anchor has multiple ports that you can just plug in. I mean, it's all just, you know, power. But, w- w- yeah, why not have MagSafe push through the data as well? Or maybe it's not. Maybe it's USB-C exclusive, but that Thunderbolt... God, I wish. Yeah. If it was a Thunderbolt, and it's, and it's just... The point is that one port can feed the rest of the information through from uh, from the brick itself, Apple could start a whole accessory line with the brick about, hey, all these ports. Instead of having a hub <laughs> or a dongle, now it's a brick. Let me just put thing. all these dongles Endless into this brick that has a thousand yeah. different USB <laughs> That's ports right. on it. I, I'm going to put This isn't thousand. even my final form. Yeah. Even that, yeah. yeah, it's gonna be Voltron and all that. I'm gonna push back. And it's say, not a terrible idea in the world no, of dongles. No, I, I think it's a very terrible idea. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think, well, because what okay. the airs embody right now is minim- minimalism and thinness while still accomplishing a bunch of other things. Uh, looking at the M2 MacBook Air, I think if you just shortened it up to fit that 12 inch form factor it still can occupy two usb a usb a usb c ports and even a magsafe <laughs> port if you want to do that because you can yeah. see it on the side profile it's all it's there. Not a wedge yeah it just gets shorter and that's it it's not like you're decreasing the i kind of don't understand why it's as thing. big as it is because they don't even put the speakers on the side so no so i think it could still accomplish what the current m2 one has now it's just okay. smaller, that's and that's kind point. of it. Um, if yeah. <laughs> if you want to go crazy and you want to be a little bit more creative, then sure, I think g- go with a brick idea and put ports on there. But <laughs> I think that would unnecessarily complicate supply chain with how they make bricks today and right now with just providing mm. an Ethernet port and all that. And along with that, just it's unnecessary. I don't think people will use it as much as they use the ports on the side of the computer. Uh, well, it could be an option just like how with the M2 air, they introduced the brick with two ports on it. You don't have to get that brick, but you can. So oh. for the ultra minimalists that are like, I don't really plug anything into my laptop. You just get a normal brick. But for those who want to occasionally plug in some additional dongles, you just, the brick is the dongle because the it's a MacBook. There's gotta be bricks somewhere. Right. So, Mm-hmm. It, I don't know why the 24 inch iMac has a brick, but it does. But <laughs> I just think the one cool design attribute of that iMac was that they were baking in power and data through uh, the power supply in the back so that your iMac could still have an Ethernet plug. And I was like, why didn't you do that for the MacBook Pros? Because there's definitely a lot of, you know, pro you more so than the iMac market there's more pro users buying these MacBooks and they might want to use ethernet for servers or whatever and if they could just dock that with their charge brick that's on the floor that would be a lot better than having to get some USB-C dongle but mm-hmm. they didn't want to bring that over so i, th- I feel like uh the 12 inch MacBook like reintroduction makes the most sense because if with running Ventura and all that Continuity can't like you know people shouldn't care about the webcam anymore. People shouldn't care about uh, even dongle life anymore because so much of things are wired. Like I apart, I want to have the headphone jack just to say there's a headphone jack, but you really don't need one. Um, this that market probably not. Th- this is not know, running we're, through. We're not talking about the pros. Yeah, I, but even then, this this is running through USB C. This is going through my my preamp that's USB-C plugged in. So if I needed that port, uh, my headphones right. going all my headphone and mic combos is going through one USB-C. Um, so I would say if you get around that specific market, who that's be targeted for the, the ultra light, the ultra compact, the ultra, uh, efficient 
Ultra. Ultra. <laughs> Get AirPods. You think these are people have we fit AirPods? The M1 Ultra in the 12 inch Mac. <laughs> well, actually, no. yes. No, that, that's totally with the idea of pro small devices, which I'm totally in favor for. <laughs> yes, we need this. We put the M1 Ultra in the charge brick. That powers. <laughs> well, and now you just had to say that. And now I'm not in favor. <laughs> Uh, no, well, I, I love think it. at that point it's all perfect. that is is just a MacBook Mini, and then you're just connecting it to a screen and keyboard. Remember, like eGPUs were a thing. You could have external graphics cards. So when yeah. the MacBook is docked, it could it could pull the extra power, and then when you're on the go, it just uses its onboard. No, okay. I'll I remember. <laughs> I, people I'm just are about my that. Life. You. That's not that's not for me. But oh, people dare are about bring it. that technology back. And put it in the Apple ecosystem. <laughs> um, Wonderful. So, I kind of I want to talk about an elephant in the room, or it's not the touch bar. It's not the, the touch bar gonna it's, die. It's not the size of an elephant. It's the it's about the size of a iPhone ten. <laughs> what about the touch bar, Randy? When is that gonna die? No, it's never gonna die. <laughs> They're going to keep re-releasing the 13-inch Pro with the touch bar like every year. It's like a self-fulfilling <laughs> prophecy. They're like, we're going to get rid of the touch bar. Oh, crap. We made too much. I guess we should reintroduce it in another <laughs> model. All right. We'll get rid of it this cycle. What if it said Oops. while supplies last for like 10 years? Just like no one years. buys it. But <laughs> but just like no one orders it. Put the touch just bar. just trying to delay the no. elephant. No. No. No, no, no delaying okay. this. The touch bar can go inside an iPhone 10. Um. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> no, I'm joking. What's I'm joking. wrong with you? Inspired me, Randy. I know. I'm I'm teasing you. It's That's all I can say. I, I I saw you get the 13 mini, and I was so inspired. Just to spite you, when I saw you post that video. I swear to you, I was looking for an iPhone 7 just to compete with you at that point. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to get an You're iPhone like, 7. Okay. Yeah. Let's keep going. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll downgrade all the way to the first iPhone SE because that, I mean, what's better than an iPhone mini? The SE first gen, touch touch ID, and still uh, Apple Pay. I thought about it. I've, I've still got an original iPhone, Randy, so. I can I can win this game. We can we can go way back if we need to. Are you challenging me? Because I I tell you right now, I got an old Nokia brick right over there. <laughs> I have the old like hold one end in the ear and talk in the other end. Hello, hello, <laughs> Sally, <laughs> Sally, hello, operator. Down downgrading to the first phone ever. <laughs> Hello, Graham Bell. Hello. <laughs> ahoy, yeah. ahoy. Ahoy, ahoy. <laughs> this helps with my smartphone addiction. So, uh, you did not, just for clarification, maybe more for me, you did not have your SIM in the iPhone 10 when we recorded last Wednesday? Uh, no. No. I did not. So there's no way it was, this was under our radar. We just did a talk since then. Well, the I had the plan for several months, but I didn't announce the plan because I wasn't I didn't want to announce it prematurely because I wasn't sure if my mom was still up for the swap and if she was not up for it, I wanted a, a way out. So that's why I didn't a, a commit to it publicly and say I'm downgrading to the 10 cuz there was still the chance that my mother was going to be like, uh, oh, this is too big, or I don't like this phone, or you it's too hinted off or at this, not the iPhone 10, but you have been hinting at a downgrade for a long time because before this, maybe this is when you weren't sure what your mom was going to do. You were looking at uh -huh. going to a Pixel. You're like, you know what's really looking good right about now? <laughs> and then you're like, that was. Well, up moving for the ecosystem. Debate, yeah. <laughs> You're like ecos moving the ecosystem is going to be a bit harder, but I remember you saying like to me, you're like, "Ah, you know, I I got to I got to add a little zhuzh into the into the uh <laughs> the Tales of Tech, you know, uh series, so to say." And uh um, sure. 
this is something that I am. Here's why I'm surprised with you. One, it's not a max, uh, pro max, whatever size, which I know you are about. Two, it's not the refresh rate, even though you've addressed the refresh rate addiction. Three, (laughs) it's not an ultra wide camera lens when we just talked about how the ultra wide, oh, you get more data that you could capture. Four, um, it's not new. Like, you're not. Ten. I'm going to count to ten. I'm going to count to X. (laughs) No, the fourth and final one is you're actually going backwards you're not you're not buying a brand new uh phone that could still technically i mean everything i kind of listed off to you to you um you could still find in the iphone se today like i'm gonna try the new se gen what you know you could say that and it would still be new and just for you to make that you know make that case for it but you're actually going to not just a an older phone but a discontinued phone the first phone that started the new trend of Next year discontinued. Next year discontinued. Next year discontinued. iPhone 10 became 10s. 10s became 11 Pro. 11 Pro 12. Each year, like it never survived a year after that. So iPhone 10 is the first phone yep. that never survived a year going forward. Every other phone before that survived a year, with the exception of the I think five. So. The five was discontinued. Yeah, I was going to say the five got discontinued after one year, but the the 10. The difference is the 10 came out in November. And was replaced the following September. So this only ah! lasted ten months. Apple only Woo! sold it sold Yay! it for ten months, and then it was dead. All right, <laughs> all right. So it's a limited edition. <laughs> Where you're There's amongst friends, Drew. We're, you're you you are with you are with loved ones here. So let's let's just yes. have some honesty pie. How long are you going to keep this up? <laughs> Everyone asks the same question. I know. I'm being like, facetious. I'm being honry. I don't. Mean that. <laughs> I don't I'm really know, but I, I will admit brutally honesty that I I love it. To be honest, like there's there's problems that I knew about going into it. You know, nobody gets old phones better than I do. I remember all the specs. I remember the features they get and don't get, but just. Having a, a lighter phone with the rounded chassis feels so much more comfortable, and I've forgotten how much easier it is to hold for extended periods, and also the whole process of swiping up to go home or swiping down for control center. All that, when you have a rounded off 2.5D glass, just feels a lot more gentler than the squared off edge design. And the squared off edge design was cool and different because we had had the rounded edge for so long uh we had it since the six basically and it was finally like oh my god they changed something so it it had a wow effect and i did agree that it looked better and i think i still kind of acknowledge that it looks better this definitely refracts more light but i guess when i'm using my phone differently as like this is no longer something i'm trying to spend a ton of time on i'm actively trying to spend less time and just treat it more like a tool more so than a rabbit hole that i fall down all the time it's like, well, the the brief times I do get interaction with it are more enjoyable because it's so compact and so much easier to hold and um, much more comfortable. There's downsides, of course, and I'll, I'll I can express all kinds of problems it has. But uh, I, my my first impressions are that this kind of extinguishes, I think, a a dopamine hit that a lot of people have in the tech community, which is just that I'm tired of my old phone and I need something different, you know, like, and, and a lot of the people associate that with, I need something new. I need to get rid of my old phone because I've had it for a while no, you know. and I get it. It's like, <laughs> I need something. Uh, and, and then what happens, and this is why people upgrade every year is they're like, I, I just want something a little bit different. So they upgrade to the latest and greatest iPhone, and there's a couple of new features, new camera things, new display tweaks and stuff, and they go, okay, cool. It's different. I feel like I got a new phone. When in reality, downgrading this far has made me realize, like, I don't think it necessarily needs to be something new. You can get something very old or much cheaper, and still it kind of scratches that itch of, like, okay, this is different. Okay, this is... 
I, I, I have a different uh, form factor I'm working with and a different set of features like 3D Touch, and I didn't have that before. So it kind of revives a lot of that uh, I'm bored with my phone, which happens to people in the tech community a lot because we talk about tech all the time and we kind of get sick of using the same stuff over and over again. So we, we like to mix things up just like people will just get a new case or change their wallpaper to mix things up. And to me, this was like, you know, getting a new wallpaper that also <laughs> um, feels a lot more comfortable and, you know, all the, all the benefits yeah. of downgrading. So yeah, it's, it's been a very pleasant experience. I actually switched uh, two hours after we finished recording the last podcast. My mother came over that day and was like, she wanted a haircut for one. So my wife gave her a haircut. And for two, I was like, while you're getting your haircut, you want to swap phones? And I let her try the 13 Pro Max. And she's like, whoa, this is cool. Yeah, let's swap phones. So we swapped everything around. And yeah, she she's been liking it. And I've been enjoying it. And I gave her the option two days later. I was like, hey, Talos of return policy. You want to go back? Is it too bulky? Is it too big? She's like, no, no, it's fine. I, I got I get used to it. It's, it's no big deal. So she's still happy with it. And... I'm still happy with mine. I, at no point in the past week, uh, have felt like, oh, God, what did I do? I need to go back. You know, there's, What have I done? What have I done? <laughs> there's been little You're moments when I'm... fulfilling your destiny. <laughs> yeah. There's little moments when I record video, and I notice the limitations of the sensor, and I'll go, oh, okay. All right. I'm starting to feel it a little bit, like, oh... That's something I'm not going to have anymore, but nothing, nothing major enough or just distracting enough for make, to make me go, oh crap, this was a mistake. Like overall, I am still very grateful I did it. And I feel like I can relate more to the people. Like I've heard Randy say many times in the past, like this was my favorite iPhone design, this, this generation in history. And I've always, I always used to say, I'm not nostalgic like that. I always just prefer the yep. newest design. Yep. And then once I realized more and more, I kept holding old phones going, oh, wait a minute. I really like this. This is comfortable. And then in videos, I noticed myself saying, I like the 5.8 inch form factor. There it is. There's there it Randy's. is. <laughs> this is it. Like I, I, I have to monument and mount it. I haven't mounted yet because, you know, dad yeah. life. But like the, the 5S, I, that's that, what brought you back to iOS. It did. That You're right. Oh, good memory. That's exactly it. Yeah. I, I was starting to drift. I was a drifter. <laughs> I I was giving up and I, iOS 7 introduction with then Touch ID and and th what the 5S showed with the first 64-bit architecture design. I I that was it. I became that was very mom few moments in my life where I have like that was the moment I became Heisenberg. <laughs> 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 That's a joke only I think Drew and I would get. <laughs> but <laughs> That's true. No one um, watches Breaking Bad. <laughs> yeah. Or or read the comments that in depth. But that was the very moment. Bob Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> seven! You're gonna make seven. <laughs> um but Can I we get I just wanna see more uh uh uh, Walter Breaking Bad commercials for everyday things. Like I would love Apple to do a commercial with I am Walter White makes the three nanometer architecture. <laughs> <You know. laughs> and you think how that many MacBooks me? are there? Seven, <laughs> seven. You all make seven. All right, we're gonna sell a lot of chips, boys. Oh, even chips like the chip. Yeah, that works. So, uh, that was Mr. the moment. Starlight. <laughs> yeah, I'd say. <laughs> I'd say iPhone 5S and with iOS 7 was the moment I it solidified me as a genuine Apple sheep of, of the new era. Mm -hmm. I liked Apple and I grew up with it in the 90s and stuff. And so I had a bunch of like back and forth. But I never I was never like in, I was not committed to an ecosystem because I just didn't care. And then that all changed with that. So that's why the nostalgic for me was like mm! and. What you're alluding to, which I totally <laughs> see your your Bowser, your thought. Mm. Oh, uh, the thwomp. The oh thwomp. That's what it is. Yeah. I, I, you <laughs> you were so ecstatic about the iPhone 10 design. How and not just for the fact that like that kind of catapulted your channel and then 
So that was a big phone for my career. A big career <laughs> shift right there. So I there. feel like I owe a lot of my my career because of how drastic of a redesign the 10 was. Yeah. And even in 2023, I found myself still saying in streams and videos and stuff like that, we'll never get an upgrade that big. Like that was the biggest year over year big... change. Yeah. And we'll never ever have another upgrade that had X number of changes or 10 number of changes. And because there was so many, <laughs> I feel like this show is just progressively Mike giving up on us. Like, <laughs> just stop, stop. You need a, we need like a, a soundboard or something he can click. <laughs> I'll set one. Every time we make jokes like that, stop it. Get some, <laughs> it's just, he presses it and it just plays stop it over and over. Or for, yeah, the video, like, for the YouTube viewers, the big old poof, no. No, yeah, <laughs> just says no over and over again. But yeah, I, I felt like the universe was telling me to do this. It wasn't like one day I just woke up and went, I need the iPhone 10 again. It was like, okay, <laughs> mom's asking for my old phone. I don't want to get the 14 Pro. And I I know she has the 10. And we've been talking about reviewing older tech. And I noticed people in the streams and comments and stuff. I, I keep telling people, buy secondhand, buy refurbished. And they're like, but Drew, you don't do that. And I'm like, shut up. So let me <laughs> try to stay a little true bit more true to my word. Yeah, I'm like, all right. If, if I'm going to recommend old tech and refurbished secondhand tech, then I'm going to I'm gonna live by it and not just talk by it so that people can't say, well, you don't know what it's like. I can be like... <laughs> You think you're living in old times with your 10Rs and 10Ss? Your your phones have features my phone doesn't have, so it's a it's a it's a way for me to be a jerk to more of my fan base. And, and that's all we ever wanted from you. <laughs> but there there are problems. I'll, I'll bring up. It's not just like, well, Drew, you knew the last owner, so it's no big deal. But it's like um, there are many noticeable scratches on the front that I can. And, and on the steel that I can see, and I'm not using a case, even though I have cases, I just don't want to use them. Um, and my mother got the battery replaced by Apple in the summer of 2021, and they didn't put the screws back. This is a this is a <laughs> Talos of Tech exclusive. But what? There's no screws in the bottom. What? <laughs> which I looked it up, and I guess this is a common issue that. Apple repair guys are known for is like they forget to put the screws back. It's happened more than once. Are they once. stealing screws? I'm going to need this later. <laughs> <laughs> They're going cheap. We're going to need this for the 15. Yeah, we, maybe. This was actually the main reason I got the phone. I want to be in on the lawsuit that goes on with this. But I've heard people online say that when you take the phone back, if the screws are missing, Apple might claim that this has been opened up by a unauthorized, like they can say, Oh, you, you tampered with it. We can't help you anymore. Is that a planned obsolescence or a unintended obsolescence or something? Also because of the lack of screws, um, I'm not noticing any bulging or I, I checked really cautiously before we even swapped phones. Uh, even before I even brought it up to my mom, I was like, can I see your phone real quick? She's like, yeah, why? Oh, no reason. No reason. Let me just look. And I was just looking around on it. I'm like, okay, it's, you know, it's not shattered or anything. Um, and I look at the bottom and I'm like, huh, that's weird. <laughs> it's like, and I, and I showed it to my wife. I was like, they forgot to put the screws back. And she was like, how do you even notice crap like that? Like who, who's that's looking at the tiniest? She, she's not wrong. <laughs> I'm wondering my mom never noticed. I brought it up to her because I said, did you ever get the screen replaced at a mall or something? And she was like, no. The only thing I ever did to it was replace the battery at an Apple store. And that was it. And I was like, okay, then it must have been them because I know for a fact when I got this phone, um, it definitely had screws. All screws were so... accounted for when I gave it to you, mom. <laughs> All both of them. But yeah, it was... so. All that to say, I'm very hesitant to do any of my overly ambitious water tests. I will not I be dunking say, no this more thing swimming with it anymore. in salt water. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to mm. do that with this phone. For one, because the camera's not that great in the first place. But also, it could die. It. I, I no longer assume this has 
uh, I, any IP water resistance at all. So I'll be very careful with it when I travel. But that's actually my biggest concern because people like Randy and others have keep saying like, when are you going to snap out of it? You know, when are you going to realize this is a I didn't mistake? mean that. And I was being facetious. I know, I know. All right. <laughs> but uh, I'm taking a big trip this summer, which is also part of the reason we're, we're, we're releasing all the podcast episodes, even the broken ones, is because we don't know how active we're going to be this year. There's schedule changes. There's moves. There's kids. There's end of the world you know there's so many things going on for the three of us end of the world. That that Any... <laughs> i'm pregnant and you're the father no <laughs> wait, a <minute. laughs> wait a minute no like we don't know when we're gonna have time mike just runs out of the room we don't know when we're gonna have time to record this year, so any chance we do get to record, even if it's not a perfect episode, I want to post it because I'm gonna be away out of the country for over six weeks this year, uh, this summer, and I don't, um, I don't actually know if I will be able to post videos or live stream. I'm not sure of the internet situation, but I know I'm not taking my camera on my trip. So just like how my 13 Pro was my camera on the Florida trip. This is going to be my camera for the overseas trip. And that's where the limitations are most concerning to me. Battery life, I'm not really worried about because I have my MacBook Pro and it's a huge battery bank. And perk of this having such a terrible battery life, it charges so fast. That's what I say. (laughs) I put this down, I go do dishes and come back. And I, I went from 38 to, you know, 79. I'm like, whoa, that just happened. Yeah. Yeah. When it's when it's a tiny battery capacity, it just whoop, it tops up real real quick. So, I'm not really worried about battery life and I've used the display outside. I'm not really worried about that. But how it affects the camera quality of my trips and capturing that moment or the the memory you want to preserve long term is probably my biggest concern, but I've been taking some pictures more so than usual the past week so I can get a a hang of the the iPhone 10 camera and when the scene is well lit it's still a really good camera yep. i i've taken yeah. plenty it's still of great a 12 shots megapixel and camera so it's just the chip's yeah. different it's an older chip yeah so you're going to get right. a lot of those and it's not it doesn't have as good of dynamic range that's the more noticeable part especially when recording videos it's easier for things to look too dark or too overexposed and that's kind of the point, though, of downgrading is to, like, showcase how far we've come. It, it kind of gives you an idea of what limitations do you have with the older tech and what does someone who's used the 13 Pro for over a year notice when they switch back. So it's an educational challenge, but um, the, the answer I keep trying to remind people is just, just because I may give up on this in the future, I don't think I will. But if I do, at some point I'm going to upgrade, obviously. This isn't going to last me. 50 years or whatever but if at some point in the future i upgrade it's not necessarily to the latest and greatest like i could i could switch to an 11 pro or a 13 mini or a 12 or now that i'm i'm trying to be more open-minded about 60 hertz and not be a diehard about promotion if i did get an iphone 15 maybe i wouldn't get a pro maybe i would get the the cheap one now and yeah with the aluminum and save myself some money because I don't care about the camera all that much. But um, so that's a a lot of people were just insistent that, oh, well, this means he's definitely getting the 15 Ultra now. And I was like, no, I don't think that's what that meant. That was not my takeaway from it. If anything, um, we are watching we are watching a renaissance happening with the Talos of Tech (laughs) brand. Where's the knights? Uh, Where's the king? Where's the jester? (laughs) <laughs> the Talos of Tech French Revolution. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What kind of renaissance what are you that? going what... to? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> what were you chopping off? <laughs> so, the Galaxy Z Flip. That's what it was. That works. It would um, probably chop pretty easily. So <laughs> my takeaway from watching you do your uh, your downgrade is... I think you're going to start living. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think you're going to start living a more honest life. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. I know where that's going. I try to keep a straight face. <laughs> Cuts right. to intro. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay, get it together. Uh, I think <laughs> your your people who at like even when you did your um talk about not talking about tech today, Drew rebranded his his vlog channel his talks channel to now be uh, a live channel a little all encompassing like uh what I call a catch all channel for everything else that doesn't fit uh, tech EV and um. One thing that, and I was reading the comments too, and I saw I saw what the guys were saying, or at least one, two people. They're like, "Drew, talk about finances," and, and like they want you to like dive into these other subjects and stuff like that. And one thing that I think long term viewers of the show will have a better understanding, but for anybody who's you know not been around for the the last twelve months, uh, you in particular, Drew, are very like hyper conscious of of cash flow in general, just in your life. You've made it a habit to build um, long-term sustainability for your life because you don't take any of what you do for granted as a self-employed, you know, 1099. So because of that, you, 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 you were living, you had this constant friction in your life because you are, uh, you're, you're so hyper-conscious about, you know, what, what value am I getting out of the dollar spent on whatever you do? And then at the same time is like the newest iPhone, the newest tech, the, and like almost like it was a, 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 a reflex. It was just subconscious that you were uh, leaning into it. And the seed was planted so long ago when we started with, I would say it started with the 12 mini, to be honest. I think it started with the 12 mini and it just it wasn't an overnight thing it's not the same as like the my with the 5s and ios 7 for you like this thing has been gradual and it was kind of paving the way looking back the old steve jobs can't connect the dots looking forward you can only do it looking back and i think from 12 12 mini forward there was a a hesitation that kind of clicked in your brain a shift of like wait a minute a realization that you were like, you know, in day-to-day real life use of what are the real differences of it? Because the last thing that you did before that, where you were like, eh, you're, you're kind of snooty, noses up. You were a different Drew back then was the 10R. <laughs> the 10R, you were like, you know, it only has one lens. <laughs> I, rem- I, re- I, I remember you even said like this photo, this ver- verbatim, you said this. With, with my, you used my phone. You used my 10R phone when I went to go see you. You're like, I took the thumbnail using the 2X on, on my camera. This thumbnail would not have been possible on Randy's 10R. <laughs> and I was so offended. I was like, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> so... You were like, oh, nah, 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 nah. that's what you were. That's what I heard you say. <laughs> but Drew, from then that's to, accurate. <laughs> Drew, from then to now, <laughs> you you uh, took the challenge. You you took you almost took the bait. You're like, you know what? No, do more with less because it's possible. You do it with everything else in your life. The hiccup was the phone. You don't do it with MacBooks. You don't do it with Apple Watch. You don't do it with Apple TV and we sure as heck don't do it with iPad. So <laughs> like the, the hiccup was the phone and you, you, mm. you started this think different campaign in your own life starting with the 12 <laughs> mini because we were, we were not spend all that different. spend different. We were not all that <laughs> wowed from the 13 pros with the exception for you, it was the promotion. That was your that was your yeah. deal breaker promotion. And for me, it's like this this cinematic camera thing is so cool. And and it's not that I had buyer's remorse because I'm literally using the phone right now. But it's like I never wanted to let mm-hmm. go of the 12 mini, and the 13 mini was just everything that I wanted from the camera in the form factor that I wanted. So it's easier for someone like me to say that I you know I I get to have both. But this never leaves the dock. It's always on the tripod. I don't 
touch the phone. Whereas like, this is my driver, my daily driver. So I found what worked for me and it was going s- smaller. And I, and I thought like my compass was that like comfortability of the phone. That's all that matters to me for you for the longest time was that, that you want a promotion, you want a USB C you want, like, there were so many like wants and you mm-hmm. reprogrammed your brain about like, no, that's not a want. Like that, that's not like a necessity want. That's like, that'd be cool. But you're 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 getting out of the the the, the minutia of it. You're getting away from the distortion, the reality of distortion. Break free and and like no more. Enough is enough because what so many people in our lives do. Hey, even Mike for a long period of time, he was kind of doing with his phones too. This is his 14 Pro. Is his treat to himself. It's the exception, not the rule. So many people that we know go upgrade from say a 10 i'm gonna get the 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 13 or in a couple years i'll get the four like they do upgrade to what's considered an older version but then they have all these hundreds of extra dollars in their pocket who won you know (laughs) so it's like (laughs) it's 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 interesting to see that you're you're very cognitive You're, you're what you're doing is very intentional so I don't with, with that much thought going into what you're doing, I don't believe that this is you laying the foundation of like I'm absolutely going to get the 15 best of the best ultra or whatever. I lived I'll end it with this. I lived with the 14 Pro for almost 3 months, over 2 months. Because I had the discipline to wait and not get it in September. Oh yeah. You got so the holiday, holiday I got the ho- return policy. And, yeah. And I did it strictly for the birth of my son. If you, if anybody mm-hmm. could have the discipline to just wait, if you could just <laughs> not drink the Kool-Aid for just a little bit and ha- yeah. have some restraint in your life, have some discipline in your life. I had more than enough time to live with that phone where you only had no more than two weeks. And you're like, okay, I know everything I need to know, but you don't have a long-term review of the phone. I have, I have a better understanding of that phone than you do. And Mike has a better understanding of that phone than either of us do. Than either of us, yeah. But. Dang it, Mike. <laughs> my, t- my takeaway from the 14 Pro, <laughs> I live with that phone so long, it only solidified it, my own end path, which is a different version of yours, is that I want the 13, I want to downgrade to a 13 mini. That was, that was, I was silly to think that, like, I don't need, I want the best of the best. The best of the best still exists for what worked for me. Um, Mm -hmm. We don't need these pro phones or these regular iPhone 14 or iPhone 13 or iPhone 12. No one needs all these phones. Yeah. They're all so minor upgrade that (laughs) if I ever upgrade again, which I'm sure I will eventually, that feels inevitable. I I would not be shocked if I was what you just said. I'd probably just get a regular 15 or 16 or whatever phone that's later. Because uh, the intent has changed. I will still review the coolest incentive. Hey, until Apple changes its policy, I'm not incentivized to stop doing it. I'm yeah. not losing nothing out of <laughs> I it. I respect their decision to, to lock me out of the return window if they want to. I would yeah. respect that if they said, you've abused your return policy. You can't you can't keep returning things. I'd go, okay. <laughs> Drew, understood. If you you're never going to get. I won't. But if and, unless you're part of the partner thing with Apple and the marketing, you're never going to be the oh, first that's person. Never going to happen. Then, <laughs> then I say personally, I say just wait a little bit longer, have the discipline of that as well, live with the phone for two months, and be like, okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. That because would be interesting. It, it fixes for me. I had that like new toy syndrome and wore off within yeah. the first month. And I was like, I'm ready to send this back. <laughs> but I was like, I got my, my new kid. To- my new <laughs> toy syndrome wore off in the first hour yeah. for the, <laughs> the dynamic island. Cause you were asking me about it. And I was like, yeah. no, it doesn't. Oh, wait, this is the old phone. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. So you which could do your job. You can review. You yeah. can do your job and point out the flaws like, oh, I don't know which phone I'm holding anymore. And that could be a fair assessment. But also have the chance to actually live with it for longer than 14 days. You know, G- give yourself enough time to be like, I actually daily, I, I live with this phone long enough to build a new habit with it to realize mm-hmm. maybe what you, we already know. It's not that much different from the last one or the one before or the mm. one before. And then you can appreciate what you already have that much more. It made me appreciate the mini that much more. It makes me appreciate mm-hmm. what we already have 
so much more. And I feel like that type of intentionality is better for any consumer who's buying tech products or whatever they want in their life uh, about appreciating what you already have. We, we take it off for granted. Yeah. And it's cool going against that grain to be like, no, live with it. So you could still get the new phone for a while if you just wait a little bit longer. And when you're like, all right, I did my part. I did the review. I did my job for people who want to know my feedback. I also say, let me tell you what it's like living with an iPhone 10 after X amount of years. Let me tell you what it's what 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 compromises are there. Let me tell you what I've learned to respect or appreciate or what I don't take for granted anymore. Those are new nuances that you're not going to see other um, colleagues in the field do. They just at most you see collectors, right? I found a brand new iPhone 5 still running iOS 6. And I, and I and they're collectors and they and, and there's this channel called iClassic and he's a big collector about that stuff and I like watching his stuff because he just appreciates the art for its time and I'm like that's cool but those are exceptions to the whole thing everyone's always trying to get that B roll and be the next Marquez and I'm like stay in your lane boy stay in your lane <laughs> <laughs> yeah I but do think do I it's know? a it's a really great idea switching back to the iPhone X just to revisit. A lot of different things that you enjoyed back in the day <laughs> for it. Um, Randy's face. You are thank no you. sheep, Mike. I, uh, <laughs> I do think it'll probably serve you well. The chip is old and all that. Um, would I have recommended more of like a 13 mini or something like that? Yeah, if you're thinking about downgrading. But I guess in this case, you are skipping out on 5G. Congrats, you escaped the, uh, the cage. But it feels good. Yeah. I love it. It feels good. <laughs> but it's still got a good design and all that. And this is the rounded off design, I'm sure. No is... 5G household. Yeah. And I'm <laughs> sure the yeah. internet. <laughs> same. Same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm sure that the rounded off design will come back eventually. I mean, it'll be a nice comparison between the iPhone X that kind of perfected yeah. that design before, I guess, the 11 came in with the crazy camera. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. And then comparing that to whatever has that next whether it's the 15 16 or whatever uh and i don't think i don't think you have to constrain yourself honestly to like the iphone x forever i think it'd be pretty cool jumping to different iphones from time to time that are old and kind of getting to know those mm -hmm. a little bit more even especially the ones that you have right now i mean not like jump into a old iphone 3gs or whatever but uh <laughs> something that uh <laughs> is like, like an iphone 11 like looking at the refurbished one of those uh it's still a good phone. I use it as a camera for these podcasts, and it's great. Uh, or just anything else. Or even when the time comes, uh, the 12 Mini, when that becomes really old. And just comparing that, mm -hmm. whatever its battery life is at that point, even if you got a battery replacement, just how it exists in today's world or tomorrow's world, whenever you decide to convert over to it. But comparing that yeah. to There's a, lots the, of options. The new current gen iPhone is, I think, is a really great idea, and it definitely speaks to this new, this new way you want to talk about tech, because uh, it's very easy to get caught up in the next new big thing, but it's something else to experience tech that is aging, and still use it for the uses that you need, uh, but not really like castrating you on a bunch of other things that are very useful or that you want to use. Uh, you can still use yeah. your Tesla key card app to get into your car. Yes. And you're not sacrificing any of that. You don't have to carry Wireless around. Wireless charging still works. Yeah. Yeah. You still have a lot of those benefits. So I think it's a, I think it's a fun exercise. And I, at the end of the day, if you decide to switch back to the current gen phone, that's fine. I think it's just, it's better than being content because being content isn't being adventurous. And being adventurous means mm. that you're not, or not being adventurous. Stay hungry, stay foolish. <laughs> Basically, yeah. You know, it means that. Well, you're also bringing up a good point uh, uh, with the stuff that the, his phone will still have. That like it, it actually speaks monumental uh, accolades, I would say, about how great and and future proof the iPhone 10 actually is. The fact that it's still wireless charging, so it works in your car. The fact that you could get into your car, the fact that, I mean, there's so much that it 
not only solidifies, but then also just holds holds uh, the value of day to day. It's a modern phone today. The three the the three GS is not a modern phone except touch technology, but it doesn't have any of the capabilities to actually that that and that hinders your day to day life with like your car. For like we we this is how you've you've established your life in such a way that the iPhone ten doesn't take any of that away. So it shows how advanced that tech even then in 2017 uh 2018 you know forward like how, how advanced that really is so mm -hmm. it's it's a good it's a good thought exercise i don't know another i could be wrong and if i am let me know but i don't know another more prominent youtuber the uh around the apple ecosystem who is maining a 10 right now like <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you, you, you're. That's definitely I'm the cheapest Apple you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, fru Wonderful. frugal Apple, or yeah, frugal frugal Apple frugal guy. Apple guy. Yeah. <laughs> Watch that's out, out Mike one. Kruger. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's kind of a natural progression because what also inspired me, aside from mostly Randy, was the. You're welcome the the shift of uh iterative updates it's like the new stuff isn't that much noticeably different anymore and in the same way that we buy our cars and don't feel the need to update those annually or even every five years we want to buy our cars and typically hold on to them for 8 10 15 20 years depending on our lifestyles and and i think phones are kind of headed in a similar way where it's like there's yeah. so few differences year over year that uh, there's just, in general, I want to talk about the new stuff. I'm not saying, okay, we're not talking about new iPhones. I won't review new tech. We're still going to talk about rumors and leaks and all that, but there's just progressively less of that. I, yeah. Like, just as someone who's been covering it for all these years, I can tell that the the amount of, like, notable, exciting information to document is dwindling. So that means we have extra time throughout the year to talk about how other tech has aged and earlier when we were talking about the pixel that that was my brain kind of seeing this gap seeing this um information in the market to to not report on and be like okay maybe i should talk more about android or maybe i should review android more long term because iphones aren't really going anywhere but i ultimately realized like that's not what my audience is they're mm -hmm. they're all they're mostly interested in apple and when I talked about Android, they weren't that interested in Android. And I was watching other channels review Android phones. And I was like, they don't seem very excited or happy about this either. They're over outside the walled garden. And they're all having the same issues. So yeah. I don't think I need to just talk about the, the latest and greatest on both sides. We should, because that doesn't really support the argument of trying to be more wise with your spending and trying to find your, your better value per dollar. So, and I was leaning more into, Hey, you can build a ecosystem for cheap or you don't have to buy the, you know, you can save a lot of money by buying last year's model. So I thought because this is pri primarily an Apple focused channel and that's what the audience is here for, for better, for worse, I have very much branded it as Apple sheep, you know, <laughs> this is with the boxes and everything. Like, I, I don't think I can be a general, tech channel that covers every pixel every galaxy every one plus just it, and i mean it's not honest you know even if i did want the channel to be that if i'm being honest with myself i'm not that interested in those phones <laughs> i don't really want to break the ecosystem especially because i like my my watch and my airpods and my apple card so much and going outside of it i'm not saying i'll never do but it i don't think it's what the audience is that interested in in the first place and I think Neither are you. older tech is, yeah, it, audience or me, whereas this was something I was interested in and something it seems the audience is somewhat interested in too. So it's still Apple coverage. It's just a little bit less, let's talk about the latest and greatest that's come out and what's to come, but let's also talk about what has been and what's still pretty dang good um, yep. when you can find these for like 200 bucks now. That kind of puts it in perspective of like, for less money than a SE, you can you can find OLED Face ID, you know, 
pretty. And it's still phone. a better phone than the SE. I would I would agree. Yeah, I would I would rather use this than a brand new SE three. I don't care yeah. about the five G. <laughs> um, mm. And the camera's not going to be much better anyway. Maybe a little bit with some algorithms, but maybe that'd be a good comparison. You know, gives us the opportunity. Sure. New new you flagship new channels versus or, or new or no, old flagship you... versus yeah. yeah new budget. And um, same thing with like trying to. I can already see viewership wise the the interest in the Apple Silicon transition is dwindling, and I think that was kind of the most exciting thing going on at Apple for the last two years. Right. That was that was the <laughs> yeah. big shift, getting rid of Intel, m- making our own silicon, and now, especially after the release of the January MacBooks, it was like, oh, this is it now. This is <laughs> it's just going to be pretty much the same design, slightly better chip, slightly faster performance, and now we just wait around for three nanometer. Three nanometer comes out. We all do the Geekbench tests. Wow, that's a little faster cool next year m4 wow what's that meme at? no way anyway oh wow anyway <laughs> <laughs> oh no yeah. Yeah. moving on moving so i was on. like i'm already anyway. seeing the viewership numbers of like yeah people don't care all that much anymore we kind of get it apple's not going back to intel apple silicon's efficient and fast mm-hmm. and their next chip will be even faster okay like we, we get, get it. it but yeah I think where I see the most amount of viewership and interest in my channel is talking about better value. That's what people are looking for. You know, at the end of the day, they're like, I don't care about these megapixels or this pro raw crap or this pro res stuff. I just want to know what's a good deal. What should I avoid and what should I prioritize? Yeah. What should I make sure I buy in my next big upgrade? And I think rightfully so. That's that's kind of what the tech community needs. Not it doesn't need more people convincing them they need 120 hertz, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. as much right. as I may like it. I don't I don't think that's a positive influence on people. If, if I'm like, oh, my God, I need that promotion. Ah, oh, I can't stand. <laughs> you know, I feel like people are still, you know, responsible for their own decisions. We don't give financial advice here. But if I do influence buying behavior in any way, I would like it to be for good. Not for bad, <laughs> you know. If, yeah. I, I'll sleep better knowing I convinced people to save money on their purchase rather than I convinced the most valuable company in the world to get more money, you know. Is that is that what I want to be known for? <laughs> well, I, I mean, so. I, 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 th- I think the novelty of it wears off, too. Like, you have to adapt to your... You're not Taylor of Tech from 2017 living in the attic. You know what I mean? Like you're. We have a bot for that. We, we have a bot. <laughs> 2017 bot. You talk to him. He loves the iPad 10. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, you gotta you gotta adapt and adjust and 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 uh, be open minded to change while still <laughs> being relevant with uh, like content that's worth watching today. <laughs> no one's gonna have a new insight. I I see so, like yeah. people are looking for reasons to like not that they're looking for reasons to hate, but everyone's like you. I, you you said it earlier, and it's so true. Like people are just kind of like, uh they're like they're bored. They're just they're bored, and it's not iPhone. It's smartphones in general outside the ecosystem. And the everyone's like, oh, I mean this. No, I wa- I watched the S twenty three review from Marquez, and I was like, yeah, you you guys have the same issues. You're just yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> yeah, there it is. This is what happens when you same cover old, a mature phone mark or a mature market in an in industry. Now, it, this is just we yep. we saw this coming, and it's it's a good problem to have for the companies, not as good for press coverage or just any type of like. True. Uh, We're in the hype business. Yeah. So it's it's less good for the hype business. Jesse, you asked but... if I was in the. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the hype business. <laughs> <laughs> that was good that was good yeah <laughs> i like that yeah yeah so th- thank you for the support i appreciate your guys's uh interest and <laughs> i'm excited too to see what problems i run into especially when the battery health finally gets under 80 we'll see if it starts breaking or falling apart then and what it looks like and but yeah i'm 
I'm constantly thinking about what the next what what the backup plan is if this just one day nukes itself and dies. Uh, so I'm I'm checking prices of things and pretty likely the next phone whenever I do change this it'll be from eBay certified refurbished because Ooh. I've recommended that a lot so I feel like I should use more hardware from that. Um, and. Over yeah, the I, Apple certified. Wait a minute, eBay. You can get it cheaper than Apple. Yeah, <gasps> che cheaper than Apple certified refurbished. But Apple certified refurbished is kind of a joke right now for iPhones. All they have it is, is the 11 yeah. Pro Max, yeah, and they're not very well priced either. Yeah, um, they're all just 600, 700 bucks, which I would not pay that for an 11 Pro Max. <laughs> um, right. So I, I feel like there's a lot of people that are definitely convinced that, no, I have to buy new. I can't buy secondhand. So I look at that as an opportunity of like, OK, well, let, let's show people what they can get when they go secondhand. Like maybe maybe it'd be good in the future to show some coverage. Here's what it comes like. And here's the description. And there's still a return window. And it's actually a better return window than Apple's. So um, if, if you get something that's not to your liking, it's it's not the end of the world. You can get your money back and. Um, but if it is something you're comfortable with, you save a lot of money that way. So yeah. I think that's worth pursuing because it'll be helpful to more people rather than just fueling my smartphone addiction with more and more. That's what Hot. 2017 and 2018 drew was supportive <laughs> of. It's like, let's, let's review the latest and greatest tech so that it can make more money so that I can buy more of this tech. And at the end of the day, I have no money. <laughs> and we all spent more than we needed. <laughs> I have a part A, part B question, but it's all kind of lumped in. How do you feel right now? Are okay. you, do you do you have withdrawals? Like, how are you feeling with this addiction of yours? No, I I wonder if the ten is still too nice to really help all that much because I still find myself using it in the morning or when I have downtime. So I'm like, I'm still doing that thing where I just kind of stare at it. And it's not doing anything, but I just, I like holding it, you know? It sounds like a cigarette thing. You just, it's nice. You just have to keep it in between the fingers, you know? Like, <laughs> you have to have it on. <laughs> it's just the act. So, no, it hasn't, it, it hasn't like cured. I don't think anything will ever permanently like cure my smartphone addiction, but it, there has been several points in the past week where I've noticed myself go, oh, the battery's almost dead, and it's not even noon. Uh, I better go easy. Like I better stop turning it on. You know, I better I better not use it unnecessarily, or I have to leave it charging in the other room while I'm in the living room or in the kitchen. You know, I just keep it off me, and that's honestly kind of made me grateful for the Apple Watch Series Seven because it has the QWERTY keyboard. But at the same time, I have in the back of my head, do I want to downgrade the watch too? Well, if I did. I wouldn't have the keyboard. So, yeah, you could say they're still withdraws, but I, I I don't think I'll ever be permanently cured. I think smartphones are too pivotal to our culture. And yeah. there will always be an addiction. It will just be worse and better, but it will always be there. <laughs> I don't think it'll be defeated. What's part That's B fine. of your question? No, the part, uh, part A, B was... How are you feeling? Was a B was? Oh, I see. Are you are you having withdrawals? Like, are you okay? Because I'm gonna check in now that you're doing this, and since it's so prevalent in your life now, I think we'll do a segment on the podcast every week or whenever we get to do these. And I'll be like, hey, all right. What phone how, how, does how, Drew have this week? No, how you <laughs> how's he feeling? Oh, I might I might follow up with what phone are you? Because knowing Drew, he'll do it behind our back, and we won't know about it. And, <laughs> you know, Drew traded in his Model Three for. A Model 3, but in this case, it's a 2017. <laughs> well, we've all surprised each other so many times. I just know that I can't... Uh, if I just start a podcast and I'm not using 13 Pro as a continuity camera, I'm going to get all these questions. Oh, boy. What happened? What's going yeah. on? Like, I, when you I know... said nobody noticed, because I didn't know you did a stream. That was after us doing our thing. If you filmed the podcast last week with the 10, I would have... I was going to... Drew, what what's happening? I knew you would have noticed. That's why I did. <laughs> I, I would be like, "What's going on here? Why do you look like crap?" I was surprised. <laughs> I just woke up. People, I was really glossing over the the switch from eSIM to physical SIM. Mm -hmm. I was surprised more people weren't taking that as the hint because I I was glossing over it. I was like, 
I, know, I might review other stuff someday. So anyway, I wanted a physical sim, but the truth was I wanted the physical sim by the time my mom and I met up so that I could switch. <laughs> and I was like preparing to make the switch pretty quickly. Um, but not that many people were like, why do you not want eSIM anymore? Why can't you yeah. just stay on eSIM? I think Burkhart asked me about that. And I was like, <laughs> no reason. Oh, you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's just like, easier just in case <laughs> i was like if i if i went to the 11 pro i could keep the eSIM. so i was i was tempted because that would be this size and it would still be rounded and it would have the frosted glass which i kind of miss that one one design flaw that's actually just with this color uh, that I remember complaining about in my iPhone 10 review in 2017 is that I often pull it out of my pocket and I'm holding the glass the wrong way because the texture is the same on the front and back. And especially when it's dark out, you can't see, is this the front with the screen or is this the back? And so Whereas you fixed it by you having a black glass. background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. That definitely that helps. helps a lot. That's mostly for battery reasons and also uh, the brightness. I still think iPhone screens are too bright, even the 10. Like when I'm using my phone, when I'm uh, not helping my addiction early in the morning and I turn <laughs> on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> and I have the reduced white point on and it's still too bright. I'm yep. just like, come on, cool it. So I just, there's too many times where like I'll get a text or something late at night and I'm I'm like, shut up <laughs> my eyes my so leg I just keep it dark <laughs> you also can't see how thick the bezels are that way <laughs> that, watch. that's funny you, you know you mentioned about downgrading a watch i still every now and then will look for a stainless steel series 7 um i think i just threw in the towel because i don't know I keep hurting myself, I guess. I keep letting myself, you know, I, I build You know what up. I was really tempted to get, but I realized it went against my my whole point of downgrading? You were going to get a Series 8 looking. and not tell anybody. No. Oh, God, no. Oh. You don't know me very well, do you? <laughs> I, I hate the Series 8. <laughs> That'd be like him buying an iMac. <laughs> <laughs> he would do something to just no, see but... if anyone would notice. <laughs> Uh, this this is something an OG fan may have predicted, but I was really looking for a ceramic Series Five. Ooh. I was like, they don't make those anymore, and I like Ooh. that look, and mm -hmm. I like how they match the AirPods and the texture, but yeah. the price just hasn't gone down that much. It's a shame. Um, I was like, maybe if I could just if I could sell my Series Seven and use that money to cover the price of the ceramic five but it, it wouldn't Such they're a all clean still watch. too expensive man i Such really a wanted that look. watch i i hated the price but they yeah. looked awesome and i would be did you ever see it in person in love if they did a yeah i i back when they let you try them on at apple stores or whatever yeah. i tried on the ceramic series five and i was like ah, oh, it just pops it's like it's like the silver steel it just contrasts everything so well yeah. Like any watch band you put on it. And I was like, man, if there was a real cheap, if there was like a $200 ceramic series five, I would love to downgrade to that <laughs> and just say like, I'm reviewing older tech, but also it looks amazing. You know, that's, if you're talking about older that. tech that I like the look of, that was one that's been on my radar, but all of them on, even on eBay, they're, they're still going for like 600, 700 bucks. And I'm wow. like, eh, that's. For a Series Five, I can't justify. I can't. I can't do it yeah. now because I am just too engulfed in the whole edge to edge. It's too. It's too. I love my Seven too. Yeah, and it's helping a lot because if my phone is charging in the other room, I can still text pretty easily. The swipe on the Series the... Seven, and if I had a Five, I couldn't do that. I would have to. Oh no, it has Scribble. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I forgot about Scribble. Uh oh. Uh oh, <laughs> I saw your no brain. Go to, huh? <laughs> hmm. yeah, no matter click. what, I will not go to a series three though. Even I have standards. I'm not. I'm not going back on that one. I'm not. <laughs> Whatever. You series say. three was I, painful. I still. 
I look at my wife's series three from time to time, and every time it's like, oh, God. You know. Honey, I'm so sorry. For the right price, I would do the ceramic. I just don't know. If anyone has a ceramic five out there that they're willing to sell for around 200, let me know. Because <laughs> I'd be, I'd be interested. Not, don't, t- don't t- message me 400. Don't message me about <laughs> don't message 500. $300. If, if 200. it's 500, I block you. If, <laughs> <laughs> but if we're downgrading tech, that's, that's a piece of tech I would love to downgrade to. You know, I have this Casio watch, Drew, that I think you'd love. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it, Drew, if you downgrade Casio. for real, if you get a ceramic five, um, I'll take your black stainless steel Series 7. How much? I don't know. Well, let's see. <laughs> 200. 200. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the, the idea is if I can switch to a ceramic five at a net zero, it doesn't cost me anything. Then yeah, I, I may be game. I'll play. Yeah. I'll play ball. We'll see. If yeah, <laughs> I guess it really. De- I guess it really depends if you're able to get a series five first and how much you spend on that. I'm I abusing don't... my platform right now. That's fine. anyone out there with a ceramic five. You don't need that. You don't need. You it. have a, an addiction. You should sell it to me. Shame on you. you. <laughs> I'll be your addiction. You don't need it. I need it. <laughs> but just it. It would match this so perfectly. I know, I just know. The, oh, the, I know. the wearables all yeah. being that, that, that glossy white. white. Oh. That's so... Not Starlight. No. No. <sighs> no, no. Don't do <laughs> Apple Watch Sports or whatever they call that. No Starlight. That's not Starlight. No, <laughs> no off, you know, PP white. I want white. <laughs> I want I want ceramic. I want Johnny Ive yeah. White. <laughs> I, and I think the one thing I will not consider downgrading is the MacBook, <laughs> just because it's a tool first. And yeah. the main motivation in downgrading the phone is I think that's what most people are buying a lot of. And I'm trying to showcase how the older phones are aging and stuff. At this point, I basically don't tell anybody to buy Intel, Mac, anything. So it's kind of hard to be like, let's review an older Mac. It's like, yeah, no, don't do that. <laughs> I'm kind of like, even, even responsible 2023 Drew is like, no, don't do that. If you can't afford an M1 MacBook Air, you probably just shouldn't buy a computer. <laughs> like, <laughs> like but- I don't know. What are you using it for at that price? It's like uh, web browsing and email. I'd be like, get a mini, get an iPad. Don't get a yeah. Mac. But like if if the M1 Air is too expensive, then don't. I don't think you're gonna be that that much happier with a 2015 Intel MacBook Pro. Like web I'm sure browsing. it'll work, but it's <laughs> use your phone it's like for buying web a browsing. coffin. <laughs> yeah, use your dang phone. If you use your web browser. Use, <laughs> use your, your phone. phone. All right. <laughs> Use your watch. Use your watch. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you don't need a you don't need a Mac. I I will admit though, if I if I lost or or my current MacBook Pro was stolen, I would not replace it with the exact same spec. Ooh, like, what would you place it? What 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 takes its place? Probably certified refurbished silver for one. That was my <gasps> biggest regret. If I would have gotten the silver. M1 Pro base model, maybe with a little extra storage, but... M1 um, Pro, I was right! I was right! (laughs) Well, we've we've experienced for the past year and a half what non-binned M1 Max can do. So I think if I was forced to replace it, for one, I would try to be more financially conscious of it because I ain't getting that 6% cash back again. But (laughs) if I was replacing it for one i really like the size i don't think i would go 14 inch but i would want it to be silver and i would like to see how much slower is the m1 pro i'm sure it would be a little bit slower because i use the media encoders you won't notice but i probably wouldn't notice yeah so i'd 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 get like a a silver 16 inch it's faster than your iphone 10 and that's good enough (laughs) that's that's a very low bar (laughs) you won't notice I will just edit off the iPad Pro. If something happens to my MacBook Pro, I don't want to make this as a, 
I, I am putting it in, yeah, this is a decree, but there's a very high chance I will probably get a MacBook Air. Hmm. Oh, yeah. them too. Ah, it comes full circle. Which one? <sighs> That's why I don't, I can't. M1 or M2? Probably M1, to be honest. I I, like I loved oh. <laughs> I loved that wedge design and what it was doing. It was Here, a here's great why MacBook. I, I'm I'm hesitant to like. So so okay, look. Really, it depends what happens with a 15 inch and a 12 inch, and what does that do with the pricing for other things? Like, I need to see how yeah. that trickles down. Um, mm-hmm. If something happens to my MacBook Pro, I don't know if I would get another MacBook Pro. Um, I. I hope nothing happens. I love my MacBook Pro. I just, the MacBook Me Pros too. now, they're just, you know, I've, I found in my own, uh, like I'm having my own epiphany of things. I found a, a mechanism or a routine that kind of helps me minimize a lot of my digital clutter that I've been going through. And so much of my life, like through memories, has been put onto this external hard drive, this SSD, that... Mm-hmm. I don't know if I need four terabytes anymore. I thought I did. So the first thing I would do, the reason why I wouldn't get the same con- configuration is four terabytes might be too much. I don't know if I need that anymore. So now we could talk about an M1 MacBook Air because they don't have four terabytes. So that was, yeah. My, yeah. That was my first thought. Like, okay, I would do that. I made my life kind of work into this. And um, they're, they're, honestly, it's it's more of um cost first, and then what am I – like my life's just different. I don't know. Randy, who bought the MacBook Pro, wasn't – Wasn't a father. Wasn't even expecting at that point. Didn't know. <laughs> life's different. I There's a yeah. lot that I've reconsidered about like just my spending habits that have to do with like I'm never in my office. I try to be – you, you you made a comment, and Randy's a musician. You said that last week. That's how we started. This has not moved once since last week. <laughs> so like, I don't even get to like work on my work. I don't get. I make time for us, and then I go right back to being a dad. <laughs> it's so much. Yeah. So maybe I wouldn't even get a MacBook. Maybe I would just, you know, no, that's not true. I would need a MacBook. No, that's not. Yeah, sorry, that's not true. <laughs> yeah, that's not true. I need one. Randy to- argues with himself. Well, because I need, how am I going to work? How am I going to do this? So I would probably get the cheapest Mac. Maybe a Mac, I know it needs to be that. It would be an M1 MacBook Air. It has <laughs> it has to be the cheapest uh, portable Mac OS. That's what I care about. That's all I care about. How about you, Mike? If if your current Mac got destroyed or stolen or something, and you had to replace it with today's current lineup, what would you what would you do? Would you replace it at all? <laughs> I'll go with uh, what I think I mentioned was in the last, I think it was maybe two podcasts ago when we were talking mm-hmm. about the site refresh. I'd probably go for the new M2 Mini. Uh, oh, okay. I think that logically, Regular M2 or M2 Pro? That's the question. Uh, I'd have to, again, <laughs> play with the configurator again. It's been a while. But I want to say M2 Pro, but binned and all that, like, I just the really, base M2 yeah, Pro. I don't that need gets too my much. stamp of approval. I think yeah. base Pro with uh, two terabytes or something like that, because my main concern is storage. So yeah, it only makes sense like, for me. I'm okay. a pro, but not that pro. Yeah, if I was going, <laughs> if for some reason the house burned down or something like that, I'd probably yeah, replace yeah. the studio with the M2 Mini. Yeah, okay, probably with the Pro. That's fair enough. Yeah, nothing too crazy. Good call, but. It's cool. it's it's to prove the point that these products are so good at the base level. I like this headspace about like so much of what you need is good at the base level that you don't need to get the Pro, the Max, the Ultra, the whatever. Like everything else that Apple can make way more money on is so for niche products and what people do that. And it gets progressively more niche as time goes on. Yes. The, the performance of the chips is growing like this, but the use cases are like this. You know, yep. like it's yep. mm-hmm. what used to require a desktop can now be done on mm-hmm. a laptop, an even real cheap laptop. So you're right. That's why 
It's like the, the number of people that could justify the Mac Pro five years ago is a lot less today because of how much yeah. power you can get out of a laptop. So Yeah, I like that. That's I'm a cool challenge. It's a, it's a cool thought mm -hmm. experiment about can you do more with less? And I was able to do everything on the M1 uh, Air. So that's why I hold that so close to my heart. It's not my obviously not my favorite design, um, but oh boy, that that baby ran smooth. I mm -hmm. I was very impressed. Much like the iPhone from iPhone seven eight to getting the iPhone ten, and how that was such a big jump, and I don't think we'll see a jump like that again. That's this with the Max, and I you're appreciating the 10 for what it is. I'm appreciating the M1 Air for what that was because it, it to me, it might be a dated hardware design, but I, it's it's docked most of the time and it's it's closed. I'm not really looking at it. I'm using magic mouse and keyboard here and I'm just going off of a monitor. Yeah, that, yeah. That, it's perfect. It's still fine. Everything's great about it, so yeah. Yeah, wow. Now I hope my MacBook Pro gets stolen or destroyed. What? I want a silver one. <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> wow. Jeez. Oh, no. Anyways. Wow. <laughs> I hope this thing gets On burnt. that note, <laughs> yeah. we might see you guys next week. I don't know. Uh, I think every every week is a mystery. So, But today uh, is the present, just... and that's why... <laughs> Be grateful, you picky jerks. <laughs> we love you guys. Thank you for you listening. Ha you didn't have to be yeah. so mean. <laughs> See you guys later. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.